Hallelujah. Another Sunday. Jesus hasn't come yet. Praise the Lord. So you know what that means? There's still more work to be done. Oh, so we want to welcome everybody by way of internet. Praise God, everyone here. We praise God for you. We thank God for you. Today I want to be, we're going to have a kind of like a test today. Now don't turn me off yet on the internet. They're stuck here today, but don't turn the channel just yet. Amen. Leave the mouse alone because we're going to have a special report card today. We're going to take some tests to see where we're at spiritually. Amen. See where we're at spiritually. They give you tests in school to see where you're at, you know, with your education, right? Whether you're going to flunk, whether you're going to pass, whether you got to go back and do it all over again. Come on. And sometimes it's the same thing spiritually. All right. So we're going to see where we're at in our spiritual walk as we walk through this sermon today. Let's see uh, how we grade ourselves. Amen. According to the word of God. That's what we're going to grade our, our lives against lining up with the Word of God. Just remember that your enemy hates you. The devil hates everything about you. He hates your family, your loved ones, and, and most of all, he hates the Word of God. You know why? Because it's blown his cover. That's why he hates when people read the Word of God. It reveals who the devil really is. It reveals his trickeries. It warns you. It, it sends up singles in your mind. Like, you know, what are we doing here? The Bible said we're not supposed to be ignorant or uneducated of the tricks that the devil uses against God's people. Amen. We already know he's got the, the world blinded, <laughs> deceived. Okay? We were once part of the world. Uh, not part of the church or the body of Christ. So we also walk in darkness. We know what it's like to walk in darkness, to walk in hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness. The list goes on and on and on. You know, we hated ourselves, really. Or maybe we were the only ones we did love. Okay? But we can't know true love until you know Christ. Until you know God, because God is love. So we don't look down on these people. Matter of fact, we should be praying for them more when they're not Christians. But the devil has them blinded and deceived it, deceived that they walk in total darkness. So I'm talking more about the Word of God today, not just what we've learned, because we've learned a lot. You come here week after week, or you watch Christian TV, or you read a Christian book, or you read the Bible, you can learn a lot. It's not just how much you learn, it's how much you live that counts. Amen. It's how much you apply the Amen. Word of God to your personal life. That's right. Does it really saturate your soul? Do you have it up here when you really need it about 11 inches down in the heart? Amen? Amen. A lot of people have it up here. They can even quote scripture from memory. I'm not talking about that. Almost anybody can do that if they just study a little bit or been in church a little while. You know, you learn the lingo. You learn the songs. You learn all that. But it's not going to get you to heaven if you're not living it. Amen. You've Amen. got to really apply the principles of the Bible to your own personal life. You have to live it. You've got to obey it. And then you've got to do it. Amen. Amen. That's what the Lord's going to hold Amen. us accountable for. Did you believe it? Did you trust me to live it? And did you live it? And did you do what it told you to do? Amen. It is the job of the church, the believers, to preach the gospel, the good news. Just like we talked earlier before we went on the internet, that uh, how many give out tracts? Not everybody will raise their hand. Is it because you don't want to? Is it because you don't believe they work? Is it because you forget? Is it because you don't want to be bothered? Is it because you don't want to be intimidated? Uh, what, what is it? What is it? Because it's one of the easiest things in the world to do. If you have the vision, if you have the burden for the lost, if you care about souls that are dying all around you, okay, even some in the churches, they're dying all around you. If you care, you're always going to have tracks around in your car, in your purse, if you're a woman, in your pocket, if you're a man, whatever, okay? There's been times I, I always have them in my pouches in the cars everywhere, wherever I go. 
and sometimes I'll be in a hurry or, or you just, you know, you space it out because you've got so much pressure on it. I jump out of the car, go do it. I'll be halfway to the store and God said, did you bring the trap? Did you bring the literature? You got to preach, believe what you preach and live what you preach too. I run back to the car many times and I get them and I go out and give them out. Why? I'm not trying to make points. You can't twist God's hand to bless you. It'll be blessed automatically when you do it from a pure heart and clean hand, the Bible says. When you do it because you know that somebody might get it, read it, and be saved by it. We've had so many testimonies, I could tell you for hours, testimonies of just what the literature has done in people's lives. People call up and they got saved because they found a track. Okay, we all we we only make soul winning tracks. Every one of them have the sinner's prayer on the end. Tell people how to be saved, why they need to be saved. We got a variety of them. You know, whatever you're comfortable with, you should have a variety to give out. They all hit the mark because the word of God says His word will not come back void. It'll accomplish all that He sends it forth to do. But you're the carrier. You're the one that's responsible. Amen. God's not going to leave His throne, come down here and start handing out tracts. He does it through you, the body of Christ. People were going to commit suicide and they called because they got a tract and changed their mind. Thank you. Yes, they're powerful. You can't underestimate the power of God. They, they, and a Christian can get it. They may be going through a dry season or depression and it will lift up their spirit. And they realize they're not the only ones doing something for Jesus. Are the only ones going through a crisis right now. And that, that builds their faith and, and gives them encouragement. There's always reason. And Jesus tells us how we're supposed to live our Christian life. It's really basic. It's really common sense everyday living. It goes like this. Matthew chapter 25, uh, starting with verse 35 and on. He talks about, I'm going to just abbreviate everything because we know it, but we're still just going to build a foundation. The Bible says, Jesus said, Jesus himself said, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. Amen. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. Amen. I was naked and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick and you came to visit me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. And they looked at him and said, Lord, when did we do see you and do all this to you? He said, when you've done it unto these, the least of my brethren, you've done it unto me. You see why the body of Christ is so important? You see why we're supposed to be a blessing to one another? And always be so sensitive to one another's needs? Do you make it a point to go around and ask yourself and ask God, who's in need today? Who's hurting today in the body of Christ? Who can I help today? Somehow, some way? All right, if I don't have money, maybe I can cheer them up. Maybe I can help them do something, labor or something. Or do we have a blind eye? You know, like the blinders they put on horses. We don't, we don't want to see it. We, we, we don't want I got too much on my plate now, man. I ain't got time for all that. And we tell that to Jesus when you see him. He'll say, you were so busy with your own mess, your own stuff that never did get anywhere, that you neglected all my stuff, all my people. You knew sister so-and-so was in trouble. You knew brother so-and-so needed your help. And you didn't want to be bothered. You were too tired. You didn't want to get your hands dirty. You didn't want to get involved. You see, that's what he's talking about in this chapter, in these verses. When you've done it unto these, the least of my brethren, that's how you start ministry. Somebody said, well, what do I do to be, have a ministry? That's ministry right there. And then that leads to something else. But that's the foundation. That's the basics. When you, when you do something like that, you're doing it as unto the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you're helping people to feel better about themselves when you're helping people to make it through a bad day or a bad week it makes not only you feel good because it's a spiritual thing and it hits your soul okay but it also lets people know 
that they're loved, they're cared for, and it also lets heaven know that you're about your heavenly father's business. I don't care if you're married. I don't care if you got 10 kids. It doesn't matter. There's a will. There's a way. Where there's a burden, it gets done. Wherever there's a desire, you'll find a way. God will make a way. When I first started ministry, I was crippled. I was diseased. I was just starting to be healed. I would have to take four or five painkillers to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. Just to get out of bed. But that wasn't bad, too bad for a person that they gave a death sentence to. But I gave my life to the Lord and I told him, I said, well, God, if you'll heal me, I want to serve you all the days of my life, however many that will be. Amen. And God began to heal me. Praise God. And, but I started by just bringing food to people that were in need. I didn't start out preaching. Nobody does. You have to see your heart. You have to be tested. You've got to be graded. You've got to see if you're going to withstand the pressure, the backbiting, the lying, the jealousies, and all these things that go with ministry. I wasn't even looking to be a minister. I just wanted to serve God. I volunteered for everything. Cleaned the toilets. Did everything. Then God one day put on my heart, I found out what tracks were. I didn't even know what a track was. I found out what tracks were. Somebody said tracks. I thought they were talking about the railroad tracks. I didn't know. That's how bad I was in Jesus and, and knowing the things about the Bible. But when I found out what they were, I went to the pastor of the church I was at. And I said, listen, I said, can we put a track rack in here? He said, we already got one. He had a big track rack. It was the size of that wall. I'm telling you, it was huge. You could put a thousands of tracks in there. And there wasn't one. Wow. An empty track rack. I said, wow. God was waiting for somebody to fill it up. So I went around asking people, because I was a gangster hoodlum, so I was out of business when I got saved. My income dried up like that. So I was asking people for donations to buy tracks. Within a couple of weeks, we had it filled up. Praise God. And people started taking them and using them. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Amen. You have to have a vision, church. And things happen, and things got blessed by what? Because you have a burden, you have a vision. You just can't come to church, sit here like a bump on a log on a Sunday, thinking we're going to do everything, you know, on a Sunday, and then the rest of the week, it's all about us. Amen. That's not how it works. Amen. God wants to be part of your life, the biggest part of your life, every day, 24-7. Amen. Everything has to be resolved around Jesus. Everything is about Jesus. That's when you're your happiest. That's when your marriage flourishes. That's when you get peace and joy in your mind and heart.